Good morning. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me. This is the Sound of the City with Peter, coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California, America's finest city. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody's doing well, but I know there are some people out there that are not. The holidays can be very challenging to many people. And right now, if you are contemplating suicide or want to hurt yourself, there's a number I want you to call. And that's 1-800-273-8255. If your situation's worse than that and your plan is in motion, call 911 an ambulance will pick you up, bring you to the emergency room. It's a safe place. A psychiatrist will help you or a therapist will be with you. People who are caring, loving, people who want you to live. Well, this video is about our pasts. And there are so many people out there that have had messed up childhoods. And you know, thank goodness and I could only speak for myself, that I had a great childhood. I don't know where to start. My family was not rich, but they were not poor. We were on the lower end of middle class. I grew up in San Diego, very close to downtown, uh, just about in little Italy. I grew up thinking everybody's Italian. And if I took a few steps that way, I would be in the middle of downtown. I loved it. I loved going through the streets, walking around, playing. It was a joy to me. I didn't always have somebody to play with, so I had to create my own entertainment. But I was never in trouble as a kid. My relationship with my folks... Sure, once in a while, we had problems. Once in a while, my dad would yell at me and my mom. I deserved every syllable of it. <laughs> but that's besides the point. I never was touched. I was never molested. I was never abused. I didn't live through that. That's not part of my story. I know it might be part of yours, though. And if you are suffering pain because of things that went on through your childhood, then my only advice is to get help, get a therapist, see a psychiatrist. Once again, I might have a background in healthcare, but I am not an expert in suicide prevention, and I'm, once again, by no means an authority of mental health. If I give a suggestion, it is a very uh, slight suggestion. It's not advice. I don't give advice to begin with. I'm reluctant to take advice because people freely give advice that they don't use themselves. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Getting back to me growing up, I grew up in a neighborhood that I felt safe in. Although it wasn't the greatest area of San Diego, it was not the hood. It was no ghetto. You hear people talk about, oh, I grew up in the hood, and the ghetto, and there were gangs, and there were no gangs where I grew up. It was mostly apartment buildings of people who did not know each other. There were occasionally stoners and people that you knew were up to no good. There were a few halfway houses in my neighborhood. Uh, there was a liquor store and a few other businesses. It was a very busy urban street. It was the gateway from Mission Hills to downtown. I used to ask my mom, you know, what's the deal with this guy walking down the street 
in the middle of summer with a trench coat on. He was one of the guys from the halfway house. They never bothered me. I never uh, got close to them. She would just look at me like, well, that's about it. And I figured it out for myself. When I went to the liquor store, you know, that was part of my, the greatest part of growing up is going to the liquor store. When I grew up, I always had a quarter in my pocket. And if I really wanted something, I had two quarters in my pocket. I felt like a Saudi prince. The emir of Kuwait would have been envious of my childhood. But you still had to keep your eyes open. So when I go to the liquor store, you see a group of people huddled together, stay away from them. And there's certain things like that you learn very quickly playing on the streets. My father worked at the shipyard. My mother was in retail, and they were always working. I was a latchkey kid. I did that, I think, starting around seven years old, maybe, eight. And I did that all the way until I was done with high school. And I enjoyed it. I felt like I had freedom. I'd get home, do some stuff, get back out in the streets, walk around, explore, play. One of the things I like doing best is there were these apartment buildings with these huge dumpsters. And me and my buddies would go in the dumpsters, look around for treasure. We were like pirates. And we felt like we were on a, like a, a fortune hunt. And every so often we'd find something with a cord hooked up to it. And we thought, whoa, we've uh, hit the big time. We got some gold. And, uh, you know, that's how we played back then. Today, nobody's outside playing. They're all inside doing whatever. When I was a kid, there was no social media. And aside from that, to this point, this is my first brush with social media. I'm just not into it. But quickly going into my later years, when I was in eighth grade, we moved away, and that devastated me. It really affected me. We moved to southeast San Diego, Paradise Hills. And I had to get used to that. New people, new school, hopefully new friends. And the things ended up going okay. I went to Morse High School in San Diego. Actually, the Morse High School. And I was able to play football there. I have no idea how I made the team. I did my schoolwork. Teachers there would say, Peter. You're brilliant. You're going to be an executive someday. Wow. You have such a great mind. Okay. I took my college entrance exams. And it turned out I didn't know how to read. I didn't know how to write. And I did not know how to add. And it devastated me. I thought I was the stupidest person on earth. So, for the first two years of college, I took remedial classes. In fact, one time, I was in a class that was basically English as a second language, and I was the only person in there that wasn't a foreigner, and it really opened my eyes, and it really motivated me to do better in school. That, and I met a friend who was really supportive at school, and if it weren't for him, he saved my life. And his name is Sean. And Sean, wherever you are out there, I love you. I always will love you. And you saved my ass. But going on, I graduated in Modesto. Beautiful Modesto, yes. Uh, and I got my registered nurse license. And I worked at the hospital. And that's about the time I first started experiencing depression and anxiety. And I don't know if it was situational, 
or if it was environmental, or if it was actually something genetic. I don't know, but it was real, and I went years without treatment. And finally, about the time I was in my late 20s, it got to the point where I couldn't ignore it. I went to a doctor. They put me on an uh, antidepressant. It didn't work. He tried another medicine, then he tried another one after that, and then that process begun, and my depression got worse, and it escalated, and I had anxiety, and I did have some PTSD from stuff I would see at the hospital, but it wasn't major. I was thinking, you know, that's just part of the job. That's part of the league we play in. At the same time, you have to take into consideration your mental wellness. But that's how I got to the point to where I was mentally ill. And it escalated from there. And I started feeling really bad about myself. I'm less than. Everybody's better. I'm a piece of garbage. Nobody loves me. Things like that. You start to listen to that, then you start to believe it, and then it becomes true. So that's where I'm going to stop. I don't want to go into further details, but that's how I, I escalated and progressed to mental illness. And I'll go into more detail about it in the following videos. Just to warn you, the following couple videos are going to be very explicit. I'm not going to hold back because this is the major part of why I'm sharing with you. I am going to share with you my story about suicide attempts. It's not pretty. That's all I could say. You'll hear if you choose to listen. 1-800-273-8255 or call 911. I mean it. I say that lovingly. That's the only advice I can give you. I can't guarantee anything for you. But if you call those numbers and you are suicidal or you are on the verge of killing yourself, and I'm just going to say it, killing yourself, I'm not going to euphemize this discussion, things will get better. Things will get better. Happy Thanksgiving. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every moment. Have a great morning.